Amen. I mean, I'm glad to be in church. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm thankful to be in church. Yes, glad to be in church. Uh, you know, I was thinking, what, what, what do you preach? You know, uh, tonight I knew knew there wouldn't be too many folks here, and uh, but uh, you just preach what you'd preach if there's four thousand. Amen. Right. Right. And uh, so that's what that's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna keep you long. I'm not. I'm not even gonna put my mic on. Amen. Uh, I want I want y'all to be able to get home. You know, before the curfews start kicking in. Amen. <laughs> uh, they're gonna be start. They're gonna be standing kicking in doors for long, making sure people get home on time. Uh, but uh, now we've had a we've had a good weekend this weekend. My family went down to. Uh, Tallahassee, Florida, uh, to pick up a dog, amen, and uh, ran my dog in some trials down there and got third and fourth place, amen. Uh, so that was fun. We had a good time and uh, preached for Brother Clark last week in the Jubilee, had a good time, and uh, they got some help, amen, and uh, had a lot of good uh, feedback from that. So um, I appreciate the Lord allowing me to do that. It was it was pretty neat how it worked out and uh, what I preached. And uh, I'm actually going to pre- give you give you the same thing here tonight, and because uh, it, it, it helped it helped me. Amen. Yeah. Um, let's turn to Psalms chapter number 106. <clears throat> Psalms 106. And I do understand tonight that it, you know that I'm preaching to church folks. Amen. Uh, but uh, I don't think that has anything to do with the message, Amen. I think, I think we're as easily uh, sidetracked, if not more so, yeah. than uh, than unsaved, Amen. Unchurched, uh, and you know, I thought about this message, and I thought, you know, the devil tries to get on your back. Why would you preach this to church to the to a church crowd? Um, but the message uh, refers and it's talking about the children of Israel. Amen. If they knew anything about church and anything about the Lord and following God, it was the children of Israel. Amen. Uh, they saw great miracles happen. They were delivered out of the hands of the Egyptians. Uh, they followed Moses. Amen. In my opinion, one of the greatest uh quote unquote pastors that was in the Bible, amen. He was a great leader. He led the, the children of Israel. And uh, but here at some point, uh, you, as you as you know already know, they they began to uh, follow and began to uh, allow themselves to serve uh, some idols and things like that, some other gods that they didn't have no business serving. Amen. Uh, so in Psalms chapter one hundred six. Let's look in verse number thirty three. Uh, it says, "Because they provoked his spirit, so that he." Uh, spake ad, uh, unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. But I want you to take note right here. It says, but were mingled with among the heathen and learned their works. Amen. The Bible says that they learned their works. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to preach tonight, be in your house. I pray, God, that you'd help us for just a little while to preach. I pray, God, that you'd touch me, touch your people, and I'll be sure to thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we see here that word mingled among the heathen. They were mixed. They were uh, they were allowing themselves to uh, take part in dealing with uh, the heathen, and the, the Bible says here that they learn their works. Amen. And the longer that you're around somebody, whether it be good or bad, you're going to start to rub off on each other. Amen. Uh, you're gonna if you start hanging around the wrong crowd. Amen. You're going to start. Uh, you're gonna. You're, it's just gonna. Uh, it's gonna rub off on you. You're gonna be tempted to do some things that they do. Amen. You work on the job site with folks, uh, cuss and carry on. Uh, you might right away. You might not uh, uh, take part in it. Uh, but if you're not careful, listen to me. I'm not saying that everybody's gonna do it. But if you're not careful, the, if you allow yourself to mingle with them. If you allow yourself to hang out with them and uh, and you just it's okay to you, uh, before long the, you might start saying a few right. little That's right. things. 
doing a few little things. Amen. And that's what the children of Israel had done here. The Bible says they mingled with the heathen and they learned their works. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep moving so we can uh, get through this. Number one. Verse number 36 through 38. The Bible says, And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. And they shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Number one, they submitted to devils. They submitted to to devils, the children of Israel allowed their uh, they had allowed themselves to get to a place. The Bible says where they were submitting themselves to devils. <clears throat> and man, if you sit back and, <clears throat> and look at that, you think, "Wow, it's the children of Israel. They've been following Moses. They uh, they love the Lord." Uh, they've seen the parting of the Red Sea. Uh, God has blessed them. God has given them manna from above. Man, they 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 they're blessed. They they you know they're uh, they're they're uh, God's chosen people, and they're they're walking around in the wood, and and God's taking care of them. They've heard from the Lord. They followed the Lord. They've seen the Lord do great uh, miracles in their life, and here they are. The Bible says sacrificing their children unto idols. How in the world do we get to that point? Well, you mingle with heathen. They mingled with heathen. I think what happens a lot of times is we, especially in today's society, we allow ourselves, uh, it's easy to become numb. Amen? It's easy to become numb to certain things because uh, television shows, even commercials now, um, you can't even, they can't even sell Tylenol without having sin in it. They, they can't even, they can't even sell a cheeseburger without having some kind of, uh, a woman on there. Listen, trying to sell a cheeseburger and we become numb to sin. Y'all getting what I'm saying? We've become numb to it. We've become numb to, uh, uh what it is, the realities of sin the dangers of sin, what it can really do to destroy a home, what it can really do to destroy a family and a marriage and children's uh, and, 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 and our children. It can separate our children from the Lord. It, it can separate our children from uh, reading their Bible, being interested in church, loving their preacher, coming up and loving church and loving. It, 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 what, what happens? You know, we talk about teenagers all the time. Uh, well, well, young kids, well, they, they love church until a certain point. They become uh, teenagers of college age and they, what happens? Well, because it, that's at the age where they start mingling with heathens. Amen. They're old enough to understand what these nut job college professors are trying to teach them and pour down their throat. That God's not real. All this is created from a puddle. Evolution. And listen, we got to be careful. Because before they before the children of Israel knew it, they were submitting themselves to devils. Y'all with me? Stay with me for just a minute. I promise I'm, I'm going to get you out of here. The more y'all say amen and help me, the faster amen. I'll go. Amen. 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 All right. Number two. Let's look in verse number 41. The Bible says, And he gave, uh, he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated him, hated them, ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them. And they were brought into subjection under their hand. They surrendered dominion. They surrendered dominion. They allowed someone else to be rulers over their life. Let me ask you this tonight. How many times have you allowed something else to rule your life? Amen. How many times have you allowed, uh, how, how many times have you allowed a hobby? How, how many times have you allowed uh, a phone? How many times have you allowed a television show, a movie, something like that to rule over your life? We got to be careful, church. We got to be careful to get to, to where we get to the point where something is ruling our life. And surrender our dominion. Listen, our, 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 uh, our service falls to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way it ought to be. 
Our leadership needs to be him and him alone. Amen. Uh, a lot of times in our life, we, we get to a place where we, we allow things to take dominion in our life. I've been there. I've done it. I've gotten to where uh, I've let one little thing. I've let one little thing uh, uh, take dominion over me and rule me. Amen. Am I the only one? No. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we can let it happen time, time, and time again to where it gets to the point where uh, it keeps us out of church, keeps us out of our Bible, keeps us out of our prayer closet, takes away our joy, takes away our peace. Takes away our happiness. Amen. We got to be careful. Let's look at verse number 43. The Bible says, Many times did, the did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Not only did they submit to devils and surrender dominion, but they summoned difficulties in their life. They brought difficulty on themselves, Brother Eddie, that they didn't even have to have. They didn't even, they, it was difficulties that they brought on to themselves in their lives that they didn't even have to have. Yeah. They brought it on themselves. Mm -hmm. And how many times in our life do we, do we get financially unstable? Why? Because we ain't tithing. We get we get finance, we get uh, we get uh, our, our peace and our happiness and our joy starts to go away. Why? Because we we don't get in our Bible like we used to. Yeah. Yep. Walking around grouchy all the time, hateful. What's wrong with him? Well, he probably ain't read his Bible in about three months. Amen. Yeah. Let me just say something. This Bible right here is important. That's where all of our understanding and everything that we do, the whole reason why we're sitting here tonight is all based on this book right here. Amen? Yeah. And we get, we, get so, we get so far away from it sometimes that it starts to affect our marriage. It starts to affect our relationships in our life. A preacher calls, we just, we try to ignore it because, you know, he's going to try to talk about the Bible to me. <laughs> he's going to bring up the Lord. I ain't there right now. Right? Yeah. I remember the, I remember this guy, we ran a bus route up in North Carolina, and this guy was a trip, man. He was funny. Every time we'd come knock on his trailer door, I'd hear the back door slam open and slam shut. He'd be running down the trailer park. And we asked him one day, you know, I, 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 he finally decided, Brother Eddie, he finally gave in because his wife would stay and have to talk to us. Yeah, he'd leave her there. He'd bail. So uh, eventually of months of her talking to us, she ended up getting saved. <laughs> so she started coming to church, riding the bus. And man, he and, and and he finally came one Sunday, and we. I said, I said, man, what? what was you thinking we just didn't see you? He said, no, I knew y'all saw me. And he said, he, he said, I just, I didn't want to deal with no preacher. He said, I didn't want nothing to do with church. And uh, and then he eventually got saved, brother Eddie, and, and uh, was faithful every week. And then, but you know what he said. He said, that whole time I was running out that back door and my wife was getting on the church van and all, and he said, I didn't have nothing but troubles. He said, I, I'd sit at the house, I'd try to have a good time. He said, but I realized I was just by myself. He said, you know how fun it is to drink by yourself? He said, it ain't no fun. And then he got saved, and man, he, he, he started living for the Lord. He said, but man, he said, all it was was troubles. Listen, when we run from the Lord, saved or lost, whatever, it ain't nothing but troubles. Mm -hmm. That's right. When we don't do the things in our life that we're supposed to do, it's troubles. 
If you don't try to raise your children the right way, and listen, I know that my kids are young, but if I don't try to at least raise them right, when I get older, it's going to be nothing but troubles. They ain't nothing but troubles now. I know what it's going to be later. Amen. There, there's, there's something else. Somebody said this weekend, oh, that little girl's so sweet. I said, yeah, <laughs> she's sweet. Just wait. You get around her long enough, she'll probably throw a punch at you. Amen. She's like her mama. Amen. But we bring on difficulties in our life. Let me just say this, and I'll move on. Even people that serve the Lord that are saved, when they try to do things their own way, when they try to go, you know, when they try to go with this contemporary movement, amen, that don't bring, that don't bring honor and glory to him. It brings difficulties. Why do you think so many of these churches, listen to me, they're finally starting to realize that that stuff don't work. They're coming, they're coming back to the old time way because they, they realize, well, that, that, there ain't nothing in that. Yeah. All it is is a bunch of lights and music. Mm-hmm. There ain't no Bible being preached. Trying to do things their own, trying to, trying to make up a way to serve Christ. Trying to make up a, some kind of new Christianity. We, we don't have to do that. Amen. How many of y'all still with me? All right, both of y'all. Amen. Verse number 44, the Bible says, Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, and he remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of of his mercies. I want y'all to hear this now. He made them also to be uh, uh, pitied of all those that carried, uh, carried them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen. To give thanks unto the uh, unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. So we see just a few verses before that they were mingling with the heathen, and then a few verses later they're crying out to God, "Please, God, deliver us from the hands of the heathen." But I want us to look right here in verse number forty-four. This is what God does. Nevertheless, He regarded their affliction when He heard their cry. And he remembered for them his covenant. They submitted to devil, surrendered dominion, summoned difficulties. But we have to remember there's always going to be, there's still going to be deliverance. Amen. There's still going to be deliverance. That's the way the Lord works. Amen. Isn't that just like him? Yeah. We get in this, we get in this rut, we get in this place in our Christian life where we just, we're just up and down and up and down. We're in our Bible, we're out of our Bible. We go to Sunday school, we don't. We go to church on Sunday night, Wednesday night, then we don't for a little while, and then, but then we get to a place where, it, you know, we just, it, we get to a place where we're just broken. And Lord, finally, you know what the Lord does? He hears our cry. We bring it on ourselves, Brother Eddie, every single time. We bring troubles on ourselves. We surrender dominion. We serve devils. And we do what we want to do. We mingle with heathen. And all of a sudden, we get to the place where we're tired of it. We get to the place where we want to uh, submit to him. And he said, what does he say? I'll hear your cry. Amen. Aren't you thankful tonight for that? You know what this country's doing right now? They're crying out to God. There's people out there that ain't set foot in a church in years that are terrified. They're sitting at home terrified, spraying bleach all over everything. They're terrified, living in fear. They're bringing troubles on themselves they don't even have to have. Amen. I'm about this scared of that virus. Y'all getting what I'm saying? That may, it makes me about that nervous. Amen. I'm not trying to diminish it and downplay it. I, I do know that it, it is da- dangerous to elderly. But I do know what, pr- my, pr- what my pastor preached this morning was God's word, that we got a promise. Yep. We do. You don't think God can't deliver us? 
And there's people running around scared to death because they don't know the same God that we know. Because they haven't been going through a Christian life. I'm about to get excited. They haven't been going through a Christian life like, like we have, knowing that God delivers time and time and time yes, again. They are just they just think that God, you know they're they're coming to God just now. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. It's like the, it's like when Noah built the ark and God shut the door and it started to rain. Everybody's outside banging, and then they started to realize. But knowing his family's on the inside thinking, well, God, he's just doing what he always does. Yeah, that's right. And we're sitting in here in church this morning and tonight just saying, well, God's just going to do what he always does. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. But he said it. It's all throughout his book. If he can raise a dead person, Amen. If he can raise a dead person, if a woman, listen to me, church, if a woman can touch the hem of his garment mm -hmm. and be healed from a disease that she'd been carrying for years, yeah. and him not even, him, he didn't even acknowledge that she was there at first. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. He didn't put his hand on her and say, be healed, go thy way, none of that. She just touched his, the, the bottom of his pants leg. And she was healed. And God's telling us that we don't have to be scared. Amen. Because he delivers. Amen. Sure He's the deliverer. He's healed time and time again. And he'll do it again. Yes, but here's the problem, church. Here's what we run into is that we sing it and we preach it and we, we, we talk the talk. But when, it, when the rubber hits the road sometimes... Look at look. This morning we we was afraid it wouldn't nobody even show up for church. Yeah. We got to get to the place where we believe that God delivers. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to the children of Israel right here. They started listening to the wrong people. Listen, church, turn your TV off. They ain't gonna be. They ain't gonna do nothing but lie to you anyway. Every now and then they might flash some of the right numbers on the screen. But most of the time they're just going to try to send everybody into a panic. Yep. I don't even have television. Maybe that's why I'm, maybe I need to be more scared. I just ain't. Because <laughs> they ain't got to me yet. <laughs> me and Kelly was down in, way down in South Georgia yesterday, or Friday. And we passed this old, I mean, backwoods general store. I said, let's go in there and walk around. I bet that's a neat little store. They had toilet paper. <laughs> I said, Kel, get us a buggy. <laughs> that's right. Them folks down there, they ain't scared. <laughs> that lady, she said, where y'all from? I said, I ain't telling. Y'all might kick me out of here. She knew we wasn't even from around there. If we was in there buying, Kelly, was, she came around the corner with a bunch of cleaning supplies. I said, get some more. We'll take it up home, sell it. Man. But I, 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 listen to me. Anybody that's listening on, on our Facebook or YouTube, I don't want you to think I'm downplaying this, but, and, and we aren't. The church does. We're, we're going to do everything we can to make sure everybody's safe. And we're not one of these crazy religious people, you know, trying to get you to drink the Kool-Aid and all this kind of... We, we believe in safety. We're not so ignorant that we don't think that people can't get sick. I mean, that's not us. I mean, we're... But, but let's not live in fear. I agree. Hey, Amen. Take precautions. Hey, Amen. Lord, he, he don't want us to live in fear. Why? Because this is the result of that. Look at this, it's empty. It's a result of fear. <clears throat> and I do understand that some of our older folks do have a lot of health concerns, and if they did get sick, it would be crucial. Well, we got some young folks that ain't here tonight. 
Amen. Yeah. We can't listen to them heathen like on Fox TV, Fox News, amen, CNN. Amen. Y'all good? Yeah. Amen. Now, it, it, this is the weirdest time of year to have a cough, ain't it? Amen. amen. I dare you to go into somewhere public and start coughing. Amen. <laughs> They'll shut it down. <laughs> amen. All right, I'm done. Like I said, I didn't want to preach.